Alright, so here I'm back. I'm finally set up. You can tell this is my new studio. Only the third one in the past six months, but I think this is a final iteration and it'll be there for the next couple of years. And that will allow me to produce more often than I've done so far. I know I've been producing about a video and a half a month, which is shameful for the past six months. Uh, but like I said, moving from country to countries and houses to houses, kind of time consuming and logistically challenging, specifically for a left-handed Frenchman like me. And, and you know, as you can tell, it's still a work in progress. I got some growing stuff going on here. You can recognize both of my water-cooled builds, uh, which have suffered quite a lot during the move as uh, they stayed a few weeks in a seaworthy container on the oceans and they did not take it well but that's going to be the subject of uh, many other video on how to fix and flush and repair uh, a heavily damaged water cooled very expensive computer and as you can tell my editing machine did not do so well and bless it she pulled her load but it is time for me to migrate from x99 to x299 motherboards and today we are reviewing my very first workstation motherboard the ws x299 pro from asus and yes i can be serious at times <laughs> Asus, uh, at least for me, is usually a gamer uh, focused kind of company. It does a lot of stuff, very cool, enthusiastic motherboards and products with a bunch of colors. And I mean, they did release the ROG, the Republic of Gamers, right? So uh, it doesn't strike me as a blue or white color kind of company. But occasionally, uh, every five years to be precise, Asus does release, um, you know, big boys, big pens kind of products. And that's what the workstation lineup of product is meant to be. A no nonsense lineup a motherboard focused exclusively to be the most durable, stable, and efficient uh, number cruncher that the market has to offer. So here is our box. You'll see that there is a double layer to it. And as we open it, it gives way to a bunch of stuff. First comes our two-way SLI bridge, a three-way SLI bridge, a front panel bridge, a serial port model, three pairs of SATA cables, a couple of fan extension screws, an external USB 2.0 module, an optional fan for better airflow, an Aura compliant RGB extension cable, our optional fan holding bracket, two sets of M.2 solid state drive screw and screw razor, the padded IO shield. I like the fact that it comes black. And finally, the usual manual quick start guide, warranty paper and driver DVD. All right, so let's put all this aside and take a closer look to the motherboard itself. The WS X299 Pro comes in a CEB from Factor CEB or Compact Electronic Bay and do not freak out. It only means that it will work both in server bays and in ATX compatible casings. And that means 30.5 centimeter long for 24.4 centimeter wide. So no panic, totally normal. And like any other X299, it is powered by an LG2066 CPU socket, which can run any X series processors you can throw at it. Likewise, this motherboard can support up to 128GB of DDR4 RAM clocked at 4133MHz in a quad-channel configuration. But note that you will need a CPU with at least 6 cores or more to support the full 4 channels. If you don't and have only a quad-core CPU, the board abilities will be limited to a dual-channel configuration and up to 64GB of DDR4 RAM. Staying in the memory, unsurprisingly, the X299 will support two M.2 solid state drives. Now, I would like to note the presence of two small foam pads right here, and that's going to bring us a better support for our memory sticks. Uh, and that's something I wanted to uh, really underline because it just shows how much into details uh, Asus Engineering is going on this on this particular board, but I'll get back to this later. As in other Asus boards, the M.2 solid state drive have heat shields equipped with a couple of thermal pads. But again, I mean, I want to note the fact that uh, the heat shield is heavier and thicker than any other Asus motherboards out there, any other motherboards out there. And that means a greater ability to dissipate heat. And 
This board will need it because as any X299 chipset, it is obtained already. And that does translate in data swaps up to 32 gigabit per second for each of our M.2 Solista drives. PCIe Express wise, we have five third generation PCIe Expresses, one quad slot with quad speed and four 16 slot PCIe Expresses with different speeds. The first two 16 PCIe Expresses will provide up to 16 full bus speed, hence the lighter gray color. The third will give you up to 8 full bus speed and the last one only up to 4. So in a nutshell, if you are going for single GPU configuration, you want it to be on the first position. If you are going for two GPUs, you want them here. And if you are going for the maximum three-way GPU configuration, this is where you want them to be. Note that all of the 16 PCIe Expresses have been metallically reinforced, and that is no luxury given the ever-increasing weight of our favorite GPUs. All right, let's move to the IOs. Starting from the left, we have our BIOS refresh button, and this is super, super useful if you want to update, troubleshoot, or reinstall a BIOS without having to boot the whole system. It's a, a must in this case, of course. We have four second generation USB connectors with a maximum transfer of 480 megabit per second. We have two 3.1 second generation connectors, one type A and one type C, which can both transfer up to 10 gigabit per second. We have four 3.1 first generation USB connectors, which can all transfer data up to five gigabit per second each. And of course, since it is a workstation motherboard, we have two one gigabit LAN connectors. Finally, and unsurprisingly, we have our five analog channel plus optical audio interface. SATA wise we have the usual six third generation SATA which can all transfer data up to six gigabit per second and on its left we have a U.2 connector and for the ones who don't know what a U.2 connector is it is nothing else but uh, a SATA connector which can transfer data up to 32 gigabit per second so you need to have you know uh, compatible solid state drives and lord this goes Crazy screamer. What? All right, so connector wise, what do we have? Of course, our usual front panel connector, the front panel audio connector, one 3.1 first generation USB connector for data transfer up to five gigabit per second, one 3.1 second generation connector for data transfer up to 10 gigabit per second, and one second generation USB connector for data transfer up to 480 megabit per second, but that's not only for transferring. We can use this second uh, generation USB connector to power uh, all-in-one water pump or even to monitor uh, the wattage on a compatible power supply needs such as a Corsair Platinum series and etc. And finally, let's not forget our Thunderbolt header for some USB Type-C add-ons. Okay, so, so far pretty good, impressive but nothing absolutely unique. You know, a bunch of high-end motherboards have the very same options, but because it is a workstation motherboard, there is a couple of things that are quite, you know, unique to it. First, we have a TPM connector. What is that? Well, it stands for Trusted Platform Module, and that's just simply a little piece of hardware which you add on your motherboard where you can physically store uh, passwords, certificates, and other credentials. And, and that's not something everybody needs on a daily basis, but uh, the more corporate clients out there, they're gonna love it. Uh, if you're running a bank and you're looking for um, something really secure, uh, they usually use TPMs. So that's one good thing to have. And not very far from it, we have a Vera key. Again, a very small piece of hardware that you just plug right in your motherboard and will enable your CPU write functions. Now, if you don't know what that is, you're probably not gonna need it or ever going to use it. So I'm just gonna go that way and pretend I never talked about that. Okay, so a pretty serious board, but does it mean that it cannot be fun? Not only is this a big pants board, but it can also be an awesome gamer board. Despite the fact this is a workstation board, I can water cool this thing like a volcano under the ocean. 
We have a thermal connector for an external thermal sensor. We have four fan connectors and an extra extension connector, which will allow us to add another eight if necessary. So that's a lot of fans. We got an all-in-one pump connector, super useful, and a dedicated pump connector. So potentially a dual loop water configuration. <laughs> but of course there is more, despite the fact that we do not have um, a native Aura LED hidden anywhere on the board as Asus loves to do. Uh, we do have Aura export connectors. We have one right here for a simple Aura LED strip and an addressable connector right here for Aura compliant addressable LED strips. And if you do not still know what Aura is, you got homework to do. In a nutshell, uh, Aura will sync all the different LED in your build uh, you know, to have a synchronous effect and that's pretty awesome. All right, so let's talk about troubles because yes, uh, even though this is an awesome board, you might run into troubles and Asus did what it needed to do. Yes, it did. We have a QLED screen for an easy QLED error readout. Very useful to know how and why your board refuses to boot. I refuse. I'm not gonna boot. I'm, I'm, not today. I don't want to. <laughs> a physical power and reset button and the usual memory OK button. Very cool. Indeed, very cool. But there is one feature I really love. Uh, it's right here. And it's a LED light boot sequence notificator. Right. That's what I call it. but. What it is, is simply a bunch of little LED of different colors who let you know where your boot sequence is. And that's something, again, who allows us to better troubleshoot the board if anything goes wrong. All right, so let me start with the street price of the WSX299 Pro. Um, this motherboard will cost you around $400. And this is about you know 40 to 30 percent no 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 nah. it's more like 40 percent more expensive than the x299 prime and i hear you it's not a cheap board but and let me start with what i didn't like uh because there's a couple of things which i didn't like uh, the fact that we do not have a wi-fi adapter i know this is a workstation and you know workstation boards usually rely more heavily on physical cables but still, because there is all this gaming ability and this is a board which should be able to work in a wireless environment at home or in a small office, um, at that kind of price range, I was expecting a Wi-Fi adapter. But it's not there, not a deal breaker. The second thing that I didn't like that much is the memory. <laughs> okay, I'm splitting hair into here, but there is a, a mem OK button and I find it'll be the cordly place. I would have liked it to be right next to the power and reset button. But these are no deal breakers, merely suggestions for the next iteration of the WSX299 Pro. And let's go back on what this board was meant to be. A polyvalent board which would uh, address a number of issues going from the server room to the corporate room to your small office room, to your bedroom. That's a lot of rooms. And it does so brilliantly. You can easily run a server. It's stable enough, it's durable enough. It's, it's just absolutely strong enough to run servers for a long time. And it's you know powerful enough to do editing as I'm gonna do with it. Or, or, or game endlessly on that thing. I mean, I'm not saying that if I was building a gaming computer, I would go on this board, I would not. Uh, but if I'm going on a work computer, which I can use to do gaming with, that's my first choice. And you know, if you're looking for a workstation, which will support uh, enthusiastic elements, that's exactly what Asus gave us today. I mean, this thing will do it and it will do it plenty. And you know, one more thing, the finish. The finish on that thing is really what I love. I mean, look around, look at all the hit things. The result is an expensive look, a robust feel, and a call for quality. This board is meant to last and uh, outlive all the components that it will support. And so for the money, I personally feel that this is a steal and that's what I'm gonna do for my new editing machine, which incidentally will be the subject of a new building series coming very, very soon to you.